Well, I think gold sold off as investors realized that the Fed and other central banks were going to have to raise rates to fight off inflation. And I think it's the fear of the rate hikes and this, you know, inflation fight that caused gold to go down. But what in investors really never understood was that the Fed was not going to be able to succeed in returning inflation to 2%. I mean, it's possible that they could lower the rate a bit, but not even for that long a period of time. Eventually, the rates would, would go even higher. But that we're not going to get back to the days of 2% inflation or lower than 2% inflation. And, and as investors start to realize that reality, the price of gold is going to go way up because gold is worth a lot more in an environment of high inflation than in an environment where everybody thinks inflation is below 2%. And so I think that's what's happening now as the central banks are maybe getting closer to the end of the rate hiking cycle because you know the, the, the countries are so indebted that they can barely even afford the hikes that have already taken place even though interest rates are still negative in real terms. I mean, there's no central banks that have been able to move their interest rates to even equal their inflation rates, let alone exceed them. Uh, but I do think that uh, more and more people are going to be realizing the box that the Fed is in. And, and also that not only are they not going to succeed in bringing inflation back down to 2%, but soon the Fed is going to be fighting a different battle. It's going to be trying to prop up a sagging economy, uh, a deflating stock market or housing bubble and helping the U.S. government finance uh, even larger budget deficits than the one it has right now. So they're going to go from fighting inflation to creating even more inflation. And obviously, that's very good for gold. And is that a pivot? I mean, that shift in philosophy from raising rates to tame inflation to try to tame inflation to uh, swerving back to try to save the economy via stimulus. Is that pivot, like, could you forecast or speculate on any timing in that regard, Peter? Yeah, I, I would imagine it will probably happen sometime next year where the Fed is officially more worried about the economy than inflation, even though inflation may in fact have risen. But if you start to see a big increase in unemployment, and in particular, you start to see a financial crisis unfolding, if you start to see banks failing and other companies, you know, unable to, you know, meet their obligations and, and starting to fold, that's going to scare the Fed. It's going to scare politicians a lot more than inflation, even though in the long run, inflation is worse in the short run. That's not what the politicians care about. And the central bankers are really just politicians disguised as bankers. They're not really independent. Uh, so I do think that the focus is going to shift. Yes, uh, right now they're very public about they want to fight inflation because the public is upset about inflation. Inflation is a big problem. It is, uh, can, you know, uh, everybody is dealing with it. Prices are up now, you know, over the last couple of years, even the way the government measures them, I think they're up about 15 percent. But that means in reality, they're up about 30 percent. I mean, that is a huge increase in the cost of living. That's why so many people now have second and third jobs, because their paychecks have not risen nearly as much as their cost of living. And so they can't get by with one job. So they need two or three. And that's where all this job creation is coming from. Uh, but I think once the voters are more concerned about something else, then that's when the central banks are going to pivot or the Fed and try to you know, prop things up, except it's not going to work this time. Because the way the Fed has always bailed out the economy and bailed out the markets and the government is by creating inflation. Well, it's one thing to do that when inflation is 2% or lower. It's another thing to do it when it's you know 5% or higher because the justification for the cheap money was always that, well, we don't have enough inflation anyway, so we can kill two birds with one stone. We can get closer to our inflation target and then we can also provide the stimulus. But what if you're double or triple your inflation target, and then you're going to throw gasoline on the fire in order to stimulate the economy. It's not going to work uh, because you're going to have a dollar crash, and then inflation is going to go through the roof, and that's going to that's going to complicate the problem that the Fed is trying to solve.
Okay, let me ask you a question. You know, you're pretty active on Twitter. Uh, recommended follow for anybody. You know, you're watching yes, sentiment. Follow, follow me on Twitter. I'm trying. I'm almost at 900,000 followers, but I, I want to get to a million. That's my goal. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's I mean, that's my goal, first then. goal. Because once I have a million, I'll want two. But for now, I need to get the first million. <laughs> All right. Well, let's help Peter get to a million, guys. Um, here's a question for you. You know, when you're when you're on Twitter, you're really watching sentiment, right? You're watching the comments and questions of, you know, within FinTwit of investors all over the world. When you see the various narratives and themes that investors are super focused on and worried about right now, right? What is it that you think people are generally speaking misunderstanding, right? Or thinking too, uh, thinking too highly of? Like what's a what's an important thread most investors right now are, are missing the mark on? Well, again, I think they're missing the mark on inflation and everybody is just trying to figure out, oh, has inflation peaked? And we got the yeah. CPI numbers today and that's got a lot of people saying, oh, you see, inflation has peaked. It's not about whether or not it's peaked. I don't think it has, but that's not the real important fact here. The important fact is that inflation is much higher than it used to be and it's not going back down. That the days of 2% inflation are, are gone and mm. we're not gonna go back there again. And so inflation is going to be double or triple that number. And that is a game changer for everybody, you know, not only for the Fed, but for investors, because what worked in an environment where interest rates were really low and inflation was really low at the same time, the types of investments that thrived during that environment are not the type of investments that are going to thrive during a high inflation, higher rate environment, which is the one that we're in. Yeah. Uh, and so investors have to recognize this shift and they have to make the changes to their portfolios. But most of them are still wedded to what worked uh, during the bubble. And they don't even realize that it was a bubble. You know, I knew it was a bubble because I didn't even participate. I just watched it inflate from the sidelines. But now all the assets that I've been buying for the last decade, those are the ones that are performing. In fact, if you look at our two main strategies year to date, our accounts are positive on the year and they're all in stocks. Uh, we're long stocks. We're not short and they're foreign stocks. And even though you have about a 10% rise in the dollar, our portfolios are positive on the year in dollars. Uh, and, and, and so this is a big shift because we own value. We own dividend paying stocks. We have resources. And, and this is where investors are just finally starting to shift. And I think we're at the early stages of this rotation. And so, you know, the sooner you you make the rotation, I think the better because you're going to participate in the biggest moves, which are going to happen in the early stages. Okay. I want to pick that apart a little bit. So if I heard you correctly, that's, that's the biggest thing people are missing is that whether or not they think inflation's peaked, what they're missing is that if it's peaked or when it peaks, it doesn't matter. It's not going back to 2% or where you become accustomed, right? And the consequence of that is the portfolios need to change because the playbook that worked for the previous decade isn't going to work any longer. And that's the rotation that we're seeing right now. 